Hey, Scott here, Scotty's Animals. What are seven guinea pig illnesses that don't require a vet visit? We're gonna talk about that today. But first, I wanna remind everybody that I'm raising money for the guinea pig sanctuary. I've made these really awesome Joshua Tree Jade necklaces, and they're in my Etsy shop. So there'll be a link to that in the description. And I hope you will check them out and consider helping me help the guinea pig sanctuary in Hampton, New Hampshire. All right, so what are seven guinea pig illnesses that don't require a vet visit? Now, first, a little disclaimer. I think that it's really important to have a guinea pig vet that you trust and to establish a relationship with that vet before your guinea pigs get sick. Nationwide offers guinea pig health insurance and it's very affordable. A pair of pigs is about $150 for the year. And uh, I made a video, a special video, so I'll put a link to that right here and you can watch the entire process of me filling out a claim and getting the check and even depositing it into my bank account. But I really want to stress that it's very important that you know a vet and that you know when it's time to go to the vet. But as the title in the video hints at, not every emergency requires a trip to the vet. Not all the symptoms that you see are going to require you to take your guinea pig to the vet. So we're going to talk about seven illnesses that are pretty common in the guinea pig world and how you can treat them with some over-the-counter medication, some stuff that you can buy online, or some stuff that you probably already have. Now, it's very important that you have an emergency kit for these kind of situations. On my website, scottysanimals.com, I'm going to have links to some of these items as well as uh, a video about how to make your own emergency kit. So as soon as you go to Scotty's Animals, you'll see a link to make your own emergency kit. Click on that and you'll see a really awesome video by Skinny Pigs One about how to build your own home emergency medical kit. So I highly suggest when this video is done, I'll put that video as an info card so you can watch that video or you can check out that and all the other helpful things on my website, Scotty's Animals. So let's get into it. Number one, the first really common illness that we see a lot at the guinea pig rescue, I'm a volunteer at the Los Angeles guinea pig rescue, we see ringworm a lot. Uh, we'll see white crustiness on the nose, sometimes around the eyes. Uh, it can be on the feet. We've been calling it fungal feet, but it's basically all the same thing. It's ringworm. Now don't worry, ringworm's not a worm. It's a fungus. It's basically just like athlete's foot. It's just an itchy fungal powder, and it can be cured very easily. All you need to do to cure ringworm at home is some antifungal shampoo and some antifungal cream. There's some really great antifungal pet shampoos out there, but in an emergency and at the rescue, we also recommend using head and shoulders. You can get a generic version of head and shoulders. It's got a zinc ingredient that you'll see, uh, and you can find it even at the 99 cent store. There's also the antifungal cream you can get at any pharmacy or even sometimes at the 99 cent store also. Tolnaftate, uh, I'll put a link in the description. And as I mentioned, on my illness section of my guinea pig uh, care guide on my website, Scotty's Animals, you'll see links to all of these things and descriptions of different illnesses. There's also on my website a link to my illness playlist. Oh, ringworm, it's something that can be very uh, uncomfortable for your piggies, but it's something that you could cure quickly and easily at home. Usually takes a couple weeks. And I've got some videos about that that you'll see. And it walks you through the process and it shows you the healing process and everything. So that's number one, ringworm. It's something you don't need to go to a vet to. Now, if you like with all of these things, if you think that something's really wrong and you just don't feel comfortable treating it at home, there's no reason not to see a vet. Now, it may cost money, which is where the health insurance comes in, but for your peace of mind, for the health and well-being of your piggies, if you're ever unsure and you feel like you've got to go to a vet, then just, I say, go, okay? 
but this is a list of illnesses and situations where you might not need to go to a vet and you don't have to worry about feeling bad. This is These are things that you can do at home. So the second thing, Nate's freaking out over there. The second illness is actually more of an injury. So this would be an eye poke. Now, eye pokes usually come from the hay. They, they run through a hay pile or they're chewing hay, trying to get it out of a hay rack or something, and it pokes them in the eye. And sometimes it can go right in the eye and really cause a crazy injury, a frightening, straight out of a horror movie type injury. Sometimes the eye will, in the process of healing, swell up and bulge out. We've seen some really scary situations at the rescue. But you can use teramycin antibiotic ointment and you just put a glob of it right in the eye and you will be surprised how quickly the guinea pig's eye will heal. Now again, if you're just not comfortable with this, if maybe you don't have it on hand or you're just for whatever worried and you think that you've got to go to the vet, then I say go, but we have healed so many eye injuries just using teramycin ointment and I've seen miracles, so it's definitely not something that you need to rush your piggy off to the vet for, okay? Sometimes you'll see a cut or a scratch on the eye. Sometimes there is a piece of uh, hay stuck in the eye. If you can get it out, if you can flush it out with uh, possibly some saline solution and then put the teramycin ointment, you'll be so surprised at how quickly your guinea pigs heal. Okay, so that was the second injury. Now let's talk about the third thing. This is neither an injury or an illness, but a lot of times people come in to the rescue and they're wondering what's going on. They've gotten a new guinea pig who has a head tilt. Now, sometimes, very, very rarely, I've seen vertigo come on to a guinea pig where they're swaying back and forth and they can't keep their balance. And that might be a situation where you take your guinea pig to the vet. But Pipsqueak, for example, he has had a head tilt ever since I rescued him from the shelter. Now, if you, I've got a video on the Los Angeles guinea pig rescue channel called Blindness Test. And in that video, you can see that uh, Pipsqueak can't find the food that's in front of him, and he's blind. There is a deafness test in that video, or in the in-depth blindness test on the Rescue Channel, where we tap a spoon or a, a little knife on the vitamin C bottle, and it goes clank, 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 and their ears perk up. And if they don't perk up, then that means they're deaf. But the blindness test is essentially put a little, give them a little treat, little food, a little piece of lettuce or carrot, and then put it down in front of them, and you'll see them running in both uh, all directions to try to find the treat that you put right in front of them. So before you rush your guinea pig off to the vet just because they have a head tilt, maybe they're just blind and that there's no acute thing wrong with them. They're just blind and they have been for a while. So if this comes on fast, I would say, and you feel like you need to take them to the vet, then that's something completely different. But if they've always had a head tilt, chances are they're just blind. Okay, so let's move on to the fourth thing. The fourth is a symptom of a possible illness, and that is soft poops. If you see your guinea pig has poops stuck in between their toes, or just really soft, funky poops in the cage, maybe they're really stinky, um, you don't necessarily need to rush them off to the vet. What we use is a probiotic paste called Benabac. And if you give them one or two pea-sized amounts a day, then over a couple days, you'll really see their digestion get back on track. Now, this is different than diarrhea. If you see completely liquid poops, then that is a sign of, of a greater illness. But if you're just seeing some soft, squishy poops, uh, some weird shaped poops, try the Benabac. Again, I'll put a link to it in the description, but
But if you go on my illness page on my website, Scotty's Animals, there are uh, videos about the soft poops and a link to the Benaback also. Mange mites is the fifth illness that we see that doesn't require a trip to the vet. Now, mange is microscopic mites. They live and burrow under the skin and they can be extremely painful, itchy, and irritating, so much so that your guinea pigs can go into seizure and possibly have a stroke or a heart attack and die. So this is very serious, but at the same time, it's something that you can treat at home. We use ivermectin. Ivermectin comes in a liquid and a paste. They cure mites, lice, and parasites internal parasites and they also act as a preventative so it's either a liquid that you put some drops on the ear or it's a paste that the, you give them a pea-sized amount and you do this over the course of uh, a few weeks now again the exact dosing i have it listed on my website and that's at scotty's animals on the illness section of the care area so you go under the navigation bar and you'll see care. There's a drop down menu and you'll see illnesses. And there I've got a whole video series about my guinea pig nails. Nails I rescued from San Bernardino and he had really horrible mange. And the symptoms of mange are of course scratching and seizures if it gets really bad, but also thinning hair, bald spots, scabs. People sometimes confuse ringworm and mange. However, one is ringworm is a fungal infection and mange is a parasitic, it's a parasite, it's microscopic parasites under the skin. And horribly uncomfortable, both of them are. But we also treat both of these in conjunction with each other um, because with the lowered immune system, frequently there will also be fungus in with this mange mite situation. So I recommend that if you're going to treat for mange mites, that you also treat for um, ringworm. However, when a guinea pig is so itchy and going into seizures, you don't necessarily want to... What happened? <laughs> when a guinea pig's going into seizures, you don't want to give them a bath until they are stronger and, and no longer as sensitive. So but keep in mind that there may be a, a fungal attribute to the mange mites issue. So treat for the mange. And another thing you can use is Benadryl. So you've got the ivermectin that kills it and you wanna treat that several times. And then to alleviate the symptoms of the itching, you can give Benadryl. And basically I would give a 0.3 milliliters or 0.3 cc's. You can do that a couple times a day, but it is something that they will come to depend on. You can wean them off of it with uh, slowly mixing it with vitamin C, uh, and definitely you wanna give them lots of vitamin C. Okay, so that was mange mites. Now let's talk about the sixth illness or uh, situation in which you might think you need to go to the vet, but really this is something that you can take care of at home. Now we're talking about bites and cuts. Now suppose you've had two guinea pigs that are fighting or for some reason, somehow your guinea pig got a, a really bad cut or scratch. Similar with the eye poke, you can treat with an antibiotic ointment and that will really take care of most cuts. Now, if there is a tremendous amount of bleeding or if your guinea pigs have been bit in such a way that uh, you can tell maybe their hand got broken if they got bit through the hand or you know maybe the ear is dangling by you know a tiny piece or you think that stitches are in order then by all means go to the vet but you would be surprised even a really gross open bite wound if it's on their side on their butt somewhere like that, uh, even on the cheek, I've seen some really seemingly bad wounds. And what I like to tell people at the rescue is that the guinea pigs have the Logan Wolverine superpower. And of course, you know that that is a power of ultra fast healing. So even a pretty bad cut 
with a little antibiotic ointment will heal quickly. Now, you want to be sure that as it's healing, you know, you look at that cut, sometimes an abscess can form um, in that case. You can sometimes even squeeze out if there's some pus or some funk that forms and clean it out really good with some Bactine spray. And hopefully you can get all of that infection out and the cut will heal on its own. If the abscess keeps getting worse and worse, then you might need a course of antibiotics and of course you need to go to the vet uh, to be prescribed that. But if you can heal it with the antibiotic ointment and chances are you really can, you'd be surprised what gruesome bites and cuts you could heal on your own with either some Neosporin or some antibiotic ointment uh, and just a little uh, cleaning solution. You can use peroxide. Um, I wouldn't use rubbing alcohol because it's probably painful, but you can use watered down iodide, which is the iodine, it's that reddish colored cleaning solution, and you can use Bactine spray. There's a number of antiseptic sprays and solutions that you can use. So I recommend having that in your emergency kit. And now's the time to start building your emergency kit if you haven't already. Let's talk about the last one, number seven. This is the seventh illness or situation in which you think you might need to go to a vet, but actually you could probably treat it at home. And that is for scurvy. So scurvy is basically an extreme vitamin C deficiency. Now, I wrote down all the symptoms, so I'm looking over here. The main symptom is that they lose their leg mobility. You'll see them hopping around in a, in a strange way. Their joints get stiff, uh, similar symptoms to arthritis. But you'll also notice that they have weight loss, they're lethargic, maybe they don't wanna eat as much. They have diarrhea, um, eye and nose discharge, and their coat might be kind of rough. Now, a lot of these symptoms, if they're so bad, you might think I've got to go to a vet. Now, if you have, if you're seeing diarrhea, then I would, I would suggest going to a vet because sometimes symptoms overlap. There are overlapping illnesses or there are underlying illnesses. Um, but if you see basically your guinea pig is, is losing their mobility, um, and they're just overall kind of lethargic, and maybe they came from a situation where they weren't getting proper nutrition, um, or they have been neglected, and you see these symptoms, then I would say try a double dose of vitamin C. So that would be two cc's of liquid vitamin C. Now, you never wanna put vitamin C in the water. I don't recommend those Vita Drops. Here's a video about vitamin C. Again, on my illness page and on my nutrition page, I go over all these things. So I highly suggest you check out the care section of my website. But for now, let's we can just talk about it. The Child Life Liquid Vitamin C comes, uh, it's for kids and it's a delicious orange flavor, but you can use one milliliter syringe and you squirt that into your piggy's mouth and you can do that twice a day. Once a day if they're healthy, but twice a day um, if you have a feeling that they might have scurvy. So you will notice actually within a couple weeks that their mobility will, will improve. In fact, sometimes you know they can go from hardly being able to walk to full mobility in a miraculously short period of time. So let me say it again. If you don't feel comfortable doing these things at home, please see a vet. And on my website, Scotty's Animals, I have a list of vets that were sent to me by you guys. So all the viewers wrote in, I made a video saying, what is a guinea pig vet that you trust? And people from all around the world wrote in the comments their vet that they've had positive experiences with. And I consolidated that all into a list with the help of Abby from Skinny Pigs One. So thank you, Abby. And I put it on the website. So check out my website, scottysanimals.com. You'll see the vet list in the navigation bar, as well as the Los Angeles Guinea Pig Rescue Food Guide, and I've got my whole care guide there.
I've worked really hard organizing it to make it really easy for you to navigate and I think you'll find all the answers that you're looking for right there. So that was seven guinea pig illnesses that don't require a vet visit. Now in the comments, I'd love to hear your experiences with some of these situations and also were there illnesses or predicament situations that you've dealt with in the past at home? Let me know, I'd love to hear it. So thanks for watching guys. I can't wait to see you in the comments and I'll see you next time.